On October 7, 2023, a militant extremist religious Islamic group uh, by the name of Hamas, located on the Gaza Strip, uh, which is highly contested between the Israel, Israeli government and the Palestine people, Palestinian people. Um, Gaza, the whole thing happens to be uh, claimed by three, all three major religions, uh, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. It is the quote-unquote birthplace of Christ, Bethlehem is there, it has uh, biblical significance, and it has been a really uh, source of contention ever since, uh, let's say, 1949 when the uh, independent state of Israel became an uh, autonomous reality, uh, basically based on religion. The UN granted or created the country we now know as Israel, supposedly on uh, religious, his historical religious lines, to uh, for a place for all of the displaced refugee Jews from uh, that were remaining after the ho Holocaust. Now, the Holocaust was real, and Jews across Europe were given a death sentence by a madman, Adolf Hitler, and his the end of his military campaign brought relief and salvation for the remaining Jews. There were also others that were executed in the ovens, gypsies, uh, the mentally handicapped, uh, some say a, a, a large portion of uh, blacks that were in, uh, that happened to be in Germany. A lot of people think there were no blacks in Germany at World War II, but that's a, a mistake. But anyway, um, we have Israel, and as soon as the uh, displaced refugee Jews from Europe and uh, a lot of Jews from America uh, desiring to go back to a Jewish homeland, migrated uh, or immigrated to the new state of Israel, it became a sore point for the uh, already existing Arab population. Um, it also became a sore point for the already existing Christian and uh, Jewish populations because the European Jews came in and basically took over and displaced anybody and anything that uh, didn't want to be or didn't agree with them. Of course, war broke out. There's been several wars, the Seven Day War, this war, that war. Uh, and the small state of Israel has basically taken on uh, all of its surrounding Arab neighbors even when they ganged up on them and you know, tried to overcome them like in the Seven Day War. But Israel has prevailed. Now, it's not that Israel hasn't gotten a lot of help. Israel gets a lot of military aid from the United States. Uh, uh, the Iron Dome thing, they get uh, aid from uh, Britain. But uh, Israel, in the uh, since 1949, has, has Depending on what political party was in power, and currently you have Benjamin Netanyahu, who is ultra-conservative right-wing. He is the MAGA version of, I guess, Judaism. But uh, it's been back and forth, and neither side has been actually uh, innocent or behaved according to the established rules of war when it comes to the treatment of civilians and limiting uh, collateral damage, which means limiting the number, planning operations that, you know, basically take out military objectives and limit the number of civilian casualties. Neither side has, has been, uh, you know, adhering to that. So now we have this Hamas attack, which was deadly, which was barbaric, which was atrocious, which deserves, somebody has to be held accountable for. Uh, somebody has to answer for that. But see, the thing is, Hamas is not all, all Palestinians are not members of Hamas. Hamas is a radical uh, mil uh, militia, military, uh, uh, you know, bred from ISIS. You know, it's all about, you know, back to, uh, you know, ancient uh, Islamic law and all of that, beheadings, that type thing. And the Palestinians, 
to a certain extent, they are not with it, but Hamas is the power they, you know, established their reign through terror, terror on their own people, terror on their own Palestinians, uh, overcoming and, and overpowering and, and, you know, being suppressing their own people first and then hiding amongst their people, their own people, the, you know, men, women, and children, Palestinians that are non uh, militia orientated or associated and conducting their terrorist raids into Israel. And Israel, because, you know, they, they, if one gets killed, they want to kill a thousand. And this has been going on back and forth. Um, David, you know, you know, slays Goliath. But the, the main thing is, the point I'm trying to make is like, these military actions keep going back and forth. And yes, soldiers on both sides die. Men and women in uniform on both sides die. But the majority of the casualties are collateral damage on both sides. Men, women, and children that are civilians that are not engaged in armed combat for whatever reason are dying. People that don't even believe in this war are dying. There's, there's people that had, uh, there's, there's Israelis that had uh, relatives kidnapped during the, during the raid on the 7th of October and they're blaming that Yahoo saying that his over his heavy-handed uh, actions and reactions concerning previous uh, conflicts between you know Hamas on the Gaza Strip and Israeli Defense Force caused this. He has it, he takes every little he takes every conflict he takes every interaction between Israel and and Hamas as. Uh, a charter to commit genocide. He want he he's not covering. He's really coming out of the closet on the fact that he just wants to commit genocide, much the way that Adolf Hitler committed genocide on his ancestors during World War II. And he thinks it's all right because they are Jews, quote unquote, God's chosen people. Now, how does this like twist up the whole the whole world and especially the United States? Well. It's because everybody's taking a side. It's like, you know, the, the Arab nations, the, the Muslim nations across Africa, Sub-Sahara, they are on almost to a person, they are on the side of the Palestinians. Notice I said the Palestinians, not Hamas. Hamas garners uh, mixed feelings throughout the Arab countries. It's like, if they hear, and we can't get rid of them, then we Hamas because we want to live. But if we can't, if we don't have to tolerate them, if we don't, if we're in a position where we don't have to feed into their BS, they just, you know, they just them people, those people. Now, the thing with with, with Israel is because of the people that have allied with them historically, the people that have that actually created this mess via the UN. Um, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place because most of them come from powerful, most of these places are powerful industrial countries in the West, United States being one of the leaders. Now, there's a, hairy, there's a heavy Arab population in the United States that has normally voted Democratic and Joe Biden is the de facto head of the Democratic Party and he's going to need every Democratic and independent vote he can get if this election in 2024 goes any way that it looks like it's going to go because, you know, beyond all fucking logical belief, Donald John Trump, you know, indicted 30, 91 times in the state and federal court, all felonies. Uh, could be actually facing the rest of his life in jail and it seems that he if he does go he's going to go as a broke man well maybe not broke by uh people in the middle standards but by his standards you know supposedly being a billionaire now he may not he'll be lucky if he has a few million left after judge Engelron gets through with him in the fraud case brought by Letitia James the attorney general of the of the state of New York Trump is up against the wall but it further complicates the whole situation with Israel, if you can believe it, with Trump not even being the president. With Joe Biden uh, declaring 
I guess, uh, unrestricted aid to Israel for whatever reason Joe deems necessary, whether it's his, uh, you know, uh, staunch uh, refusal to let go of Catholicism or put Catholicism in its place uh, when it, you know, comes to running the country, or the uh, Democratic, you know, following right behind Joe Biden, or the uh, evangelical um, influence on the right, people thinking that because the Bible says what it says about the end times prophecy and protecting Israel, you know, protect Israel at all costs, they're ready to, you know, launch the United States into a war on the side of Israel to help them commit genocide on the people of Palestine. And the thing is, if you go after Hamas in Palestine because they have interwoven themselves into the social fabric, the you know, the, the residential fabric of Gaza, you there's no such thing as a surgical strike. If you go in, there are going to be Palestinians and killed. And it's, it's really hard to understand that a lot of these Palestinians don't want to have anything to do with it. They're not anti-Israel and they're not pro-Hamas. They just want to live. But if you continue to attack them and bomb uh, refugee centers and uh, somehow hospitals blow up by accident, you know, we, they, you know, it could be the Hamas screwed up or it could be Israel pulled off of sneaky. There's, there's uh, arguments going both ways. But the people of Palestine, they are not going, if they see that, that the military forces of Israel are going to attack without any regard for them being civilians, without trying to give them at least a modicum of safety, and a modicum of reprieve because they're not picking up arms, they're going to they're gonna join Hamas because it, the, it, the Israelis will be doing everything, every, you know, fulfilling every piece of propaganda that Hamas has ever put out about them being ruthless and merciless uh, soldiers of Satan. Now, back in the United States, well, because we have people that, we have Palestinians, we have a large uh, uh, contingency of, of, of Muslims, we have a large contingency of, of, of Christians that just want peace. They're tired of these never-ending wars. They don't see any reason to get involved in it, whether it, it has something to do with biblical fulfillment or not. Most people, a lot of religious people believe that hey, if it's going to be fulfilled, it's going to be fulfilled. We don't have to send Americans to die because you want to see the end of the end of times fulfilled. What sense does that make? But uh, there's a battle raging because we have the far-right Republican caucus, of course, they are because of their evangelical ties because of the support of, of white evangelical Christians. They are all, you know, all that support Israel to the end. Let's go rah, 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 Israel over Ukraine. But see, now these same Republicans, they support Putin's efforts to kick the shit out of Ukraine. And Ukraine never really did anything military to Russia until Russia attacked them or when they defended themselves when Russia was pulling their little little stunts along the border. But here we are, they want to go full-fledged into uh, the Gaza-Israel thing. They want to blow it up into a full war. And both sides are guilty of atrocities against each other. But the thing we're missing is, how can you be pro-Putin for Russia against Ukraine? but be pro-Israel when Putin wants to see Israel blown off the face of the map. He is pro-Hamas. Yeah. Strange bedfellows, maybe? Now, also, I mean, we got this problem with, with, with we just settled the problem with Congress, and now we got uh, probably the most radical Speaker of the House that we've ever had, and of course, he's an evangelical Christian, so he's going to be pro-Israel. The president appears to be pro-Israel, even though occasionally he does say something about, like, "Yo, Benjamin, you you got to stop, um, you you got to stop trying to, you know, kill everybody in Palestine. Just try to stick to Hamas and keep the collateral damage to a to a minimum." In the meantime, uh, he's supplying weapons to a country that their air force 
goes and bombs refugee camps from target practice. What what sense? I mean, Hamas is going to hide among the among the Palestinian people because that is a terrorist tactic. Israel has a right to defend itself, but they don't have the right to commit genocide against a country of people that I'm not going to say innocent because nobody's really innocent on either side but people that are not picking up arms people that are not openly supporting the terrorists that are wreaking havoc in your country why should they become targets why should they become that makes you're no better than the IDF is behaving in a manner that is no better than Hamas now um United States has got a presidential election coming up next year. 66% of the people, irregardless of religion, irregardless of, po of political affiliation, you know, irregardless of sex, whatever, just 66% of the people in a democracy in this country are saying, we want a ceasefire. We don't want to go to war with these people. We don't, we, for whatever reason, we just want a ceasefire. If you can't negotiate a ceasefire, it's basically that what's going to happen, happen. But we don't want to be in it. But of course, our government, our elected leaders, they always, whether on both sides, they always feel like they know better than the people or the people's opinion uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, we always get the same lecture about Middle Eastern security and we have to stand behind Israel because Israel is our ally. Israel has been caught spying on the United States. Israel has been caught doing things openly uh, that are anti the interests of, you know, America. Israel is an ally in the sense that we love you as long as you give us the shit that we want. Israel, the attitude of the current regime, administration, however you want to look at, they have been bigoted. They treat Africans with disdain. Uh, they, they look at every Palestinian as a terrorist. The occupied territories, they have, they encircle them with barbed wire and checkpoints, much in the same way that the Nazis made the original Jewish ghettos prior to World War II and shipping them off to ovens at Auschwitz and uh, Buchenwald. They have become, or they are doing the same things that the people, the rest of the world, or I guess what we call the civil, civilized world during the greatest generation uh, delivered them from at the hands of Adolf Hitler. But back to the United States, this battle was back, is raging back and forth, and there's no, there's really no clear lines cut in either party because the Democrat Party, being uh, the bigger tent, having more uh, Arab members, they are now saying that, you know, like it used to be 70, like in most Arab communities, it used to be like 70% uh, support pro-Democrat. But now it's dwindling down to like 15%. Even in even in the Jewish the Jewish community is split because there are they're not pro uh, Palestinian Jews, but they are pro peace Jews. They understand the situation. They understand the atrocities that Israel, you know, has committed against the Palestinians, and they understand how the real Palestinian people are trapped by Hamas. But because they are Jewish and because the tension has been cranked up, they don't even get to, get to speak out because now every time everybody sees anything that, you know, anybody that's pro-Palestinian, anybody that they see somebody that is obviously uh, Hebrew, that's grounds for attack and revenge for what the IDF is doing to the citizens of Palestine. They are refusing, I mean, it's UN relief trucks ready to go, but they, they're limiting the number in, and in some cases they're refusing, which means people inside, as, as soon as there's the supplies that are there, which are already very few, as soon as they start to go, then people start to die. Chaos, you know, violence, you know, they actually literally become 
dog eat dog, much much like what happened in the bombed out cities of Europe during World War II. Now, <clears throat> the one thing that is really, uh, I guess, a factor is because this race that looks like it's going to be, unfortunately, again, again, Biden against Trump, and I don't really see how either one of them should be there. Biden is obviously uh, a step or two uh, back from where he was when he was the vice president. Trump, well, if he want a president, that's pure evil. And, I mean, he's, he's actually talking about what he's going to do to uh, install himself as dictator, basically. The group of lawyers he wants to bring into the White House, and he's open about the purpose. Uh, he's already said he's going to basically uh, put his fingers more into each branch of the government, and sooner or later, everybody's going to end up kissing his ass, and he'll be dictator for life. Now, um... Israel, prior to the, the October 7th uh, um, attack, Netanyahu just got back in. His, his party has been caught, convict, several members convicted of all kinds of crimes. Had a vote of no confidence. He was kicked out for a while, but then he turned around and won on re-election. Scary thought. It kind of you know, resembles the situation here in the United States. But all of these things, it's, it's a... It's, it's a it's the it's the effect of right wing conservatism, whether it's you know MAGA brand or whatever the right wing conservative party under Netanyahu is in Israel. But it it shows the level that these people in their desires to make their independent habitats the way that they want them to be, they're willing to disrupt the rest of the world and don't give a damn about who gets in the way because whoever gets in the way on whatever side they are, if they're not with them, they don't deserve to live. And that's becoming an obvious thing. Well, y'all can think about it, meditate on it, get back to me. I, you know, that's just my humble opinion. But until the next time, as always, peace out and God bless from Uncle Ricky at Uncle Ricky's house. <laughs>